Hello everyone, I am Dr. Parth Doshi, second year PG resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at SBKS Medical Institute and Research Center, Vadodara. Uh, the title for my paper is Evaluation of Portal Hypertension Using Color Doppler Ultrasound. Portal hypertension is characterized by an increase of pressure gradient between the portal vein and the inferior vena cava, above 5 mm of mercury and develops when there is a resistance in the portal venous system, exacerbated by an increased splanchnic and portal collateral blood flow. Liver cirrhosis represents the most common cause of portal hypertension in general, but we can broadly classify the etiologies of portal hypertension under three heads as follows, as described, uh, prehepatic, intrahepatic, and posthepatic. Uh, in portal hypertension imaging, Ultrasound techniques such as color Doppler imaging or power Doppler imaging are the modalities of choice because they are non-invasive, rapid, highly sensitive, and specific. The aim and objectives of this study is to assess the role of color Doppler in cases of portal hypertension over grayscale ultrasound and to analyze the spectrum of imaging findings on grayscale ultrasound in cases of portal hypertension. A checklist of parameters that need to be assessed for all the patients recruited in the study was prepared beforehand and primarily included the following pointers. Uh, portal vein diameter, which normally increases during inspiration. Portal flow velocity and waveform, normally which is around 15 to 20 centimeters per second. Portal flow direction, which normally shows hepatopetal flow, but due to increased resistance to the flow, as in cases of liver cirrhosis, the portal blood flow decreases and collateral circulation pathways are established as a compensatory measure, which, which leads to a uh, flow pattern changes into a biphasic one, that is to and fro pattern. Uh, portal and splenic vein flow. Variation of portal and splenic flow pattern with changes in respiration, spleen size, Formation of collaterals, that is portosystemic anastomosis, and hepatic vein damping index, HVDI. A total of 57 patients were included in this study who came to the radiology department from the period of June 2023 to August 2023. Every patient was subjected to an ultrasound examination using GE Logic P9 machine. The inclusion criteria being cases with clinical suspicion of portal hypertension, cases of alcohol or chronic liver diseases, and patients with altered liver laboratory parameters. Exclusion criteria being hemodynamically unstable patients and the patients not willing to give their consent. Results and analysis of this study are as follows. Almost 82%, it was observed that almost 82% of the uh, patients had hepatomegaly, uh, that is more than 15 centimeters in craniocaudal dimension. And 67% uh, of the patients showed coarse and heterogeneous ecotexture while uh, almost 47% of the patient had an enlarged portal vein diameter more than 13 mm. Uh, hepatic vein damping index less than 0.6 was observed in almost 81% of the cases. 74% uh, of the patients showed a splenomegaly, spleen size more than 12 cm. 65% of the patients had enlarged uh, and dilated splenic vein were cut off taken as 10 mm. However, the splenic vein flow pattern in majority of the cases, that is 88% of the cases, was normal hepatopetal flow. Uh, only one patient had hepatofugal flow in splenic vein. Uh, periportal collaterals were seen in almost 47% uh, of the cases, while the second most common was perisplenic collaterals, while we also observed peripancreatic and paramedical collaterals. 67% uh, of the cases had ascites along with uh, portal hypertension. And uh, co co coming to portal vein flow pattern, 86% of the patients had normal hepatopetal flow, while two patients had hepatofugal flow and only one patient had biphasic flow, that is to and flow pattern. Uh, these are certain ultrasound images showing the normal anatomy at porta, uh, certain peripancreatic collaterals, uh, cavernomatous transformation of the portal vein due to multiple collaterals, and a normal portal venous flow with its waveform. Uh, the these images show the centrifugal uh, flow pattern in the portal vein along with ascites and a dilated portal vein. A uh, biphasic waveform noticed in portal vein which is to and flow pattern and normal triphasic waveform of the hepatic vein. Uh, Doppler ultrasonography is a non-invasive method of evaluating hepatic and portal hemodynamics. The change of waveform in hepatic vein as seen by Doppler ultrasonography would be an invaluable tool in assessing portal hypertension in cirrhotic patients. 
hepatic vein wave form in a healthy person is normally triphasic. That is two negative waves and a positive wave due to cardiac variations in the CVP. Normal triphasic hepatic vein Doppler waveform is transformed into a biphasic or monophasic waveform in cirrhosis and portal hypertension. The hepatic vein damping index is a quantitative parameter to assess the extent of the abnormal waveform. In this study, out of 57 patients examined, 51 were males and 6 were females. Majority of the patients lying in age group of 45 to 55 years, which is almost around 36 patients. Liver disease demonstrates a sex predilection with males, making up for more than 60% of the patients with chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. However, higher incidence among males could be attributed to the alcohol consumption leading to cirrhosis and portal hypertension. Gibson et al. found that splenomegaly is a specific sign of portal hypertension. In this study, 74% of the patients also had splenomegaly with screen size more than 12 cm. Ditchfield et al. reported 59% of the patients with spleen size of more than 13 cm. A study by Bolondi et al. suggested that portal vein diameter more than 13 mm is a fairly characteristic sign of portal hypertension. The same was observed in our study as well, with almost 47% of the patients having portal vein diameter more than 13 mm. Another study by Doc Messi et al in which they assessed 38 patients for diagnostic value of real-time ultrasound for portal hypertension, in comparison with percutaneous transhepatic photography, showed that frequency of detection of collaterals by ultrasonography was 85% for coronary, 100% for paraumbilical, and 10% for short gastric vein. Here also it was concluded that sonography is the first choice of investigation for demonstrating collateral veins and diagnosing portal hypertension. The damping index of the hepatic vein waveform obtained via Doppler might be a non-invasive supplementary tool in evaluation of severity of portal hypertension in patients with liver cirrhosis. Coming to conclusion, the Doppler sonography is a valuable non-invasive alternative which not only provides precise information in localizing and characterizing the portal vein among the patients with portal hypertension, but is also helpful in identifying the presence of various portosystemic collaterals. The hepatic vein damping index correlates well with the severity of liver dysfunction in cases of liver cirrhosis. So, uh, these are my references. Uh, thank you.